What up brothers, it's Clipper King returning for a really special review tonight on a figure that gladly I've not had to buy. It's been lent to me by a good friend of mine in the uh, Facebook community called Wazim Rockefeller Khan. I know a lot of you guys will recognise his name because he's very active in the uh, buy, sell and trade groups. So he asked me about, fucking hell, it's got to be three, four months ago. Uh, I've got the 1-4 scale Batman coming, Rick. Have you got it coming? I was like, well, no, I haven't, but I, it would be a figure I'd be interested in picking up. He says, well, if you don't pick it up, will you please review mine? I was like, well, yeah, of course I will. But it always takes me by shock when things like that get asked to me because I think, if I've just paid £400 for a figure and I'm waiting for it and I'm on a long pre-order, the last thing I'm thinking about is who else is going to who else is gonna open it and review it for me. But like I said, it's always quite flattering that they think about me and uh, it's hard to say no, don't bother sending a figure like this because if you're not going to buy it, it is very fucking nice to see it. And I've got to say, I'm one of them people, I'm, I always sort of praise people for the things they get or the things they've got. Uh, never begrudge them anything. Don't get jealous of other people's collections as such. But when I opened this on Friday, I'm thinking, fucking hell, I've got to get my shit together and get on this bad boy because it is awesome. It won't surprise you that that's my thoughts because... I display my uh, DX12 with pride. I'm always tinkering about with it, and I've said in a lot of reviews it were my uh, favourite figure up to recently when it closely matched by the DX13. Anybody who's not watched the DX13 review, please go back and have a look because uh, that is a masterpiece in itself. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much how I came by this figure. So, I will start off by thanking Wazim, or Waz, as he calls himself in this letter, which I will read. It did come packaged with, obviously, the Batman. Two Tony Mai capes, which I will be only displaying it with. I won't display it with the stock cape, because I don't think it's good enough for the figure. So, like I said, I've got two versions of the uh, Tony Mai capes. One, the battle length one, which it's wearing now, and looks beautiful, as you can see. And also the wired cape, which is more a, a thick velvet, so I will be able to get some articulation on that cape. Uh, also inside there, put this uh, nice letter which I will read you and also a Blu-ray copy of Casino which I'm buzzing about. Not because I ain't got Casino because obviously I have a massive fan of uh, Robert De Niro and I have got the steelbook version of Casino. But it's nice the fact that he listens to what I say or the things I post on Facebook uh, and it's up. maybe he ain't got it and he's sent that with me. He's also put in the letter or on a message, I know you've probably got it but there you go sort of thing so massive shout out to him i know the price of blu-rays so and he didn't have to do that just seeing the figure were enough for me but uh, obviously i'm appreciative so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start this bitch turning so you can get a good look at it from all the angles and then just look at the turn no stander out on that just rotating around looking beautiful look at swags and cape balancing oh hear that pretty standard pose i will get some poses in but what i'm going to do is because i could get 30 poses out of this figure easy it's that good what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a normal review like i always would i might throw in some comparisons with the enter bay batman which is also a beast i'm not going to do a like for like comparison i were thinking about doing it but dean knight did one recently and i think he's done more than an awesome job so there's no point me sort of covering that ground again because a lot of the points he made would have been things I would have said anyway but I will refer back when I'm talking about the things I like or dislike about this figure so you see got a turn in the turntable will turn a 1 4 scale figure luckily so we'll get that rotating and we'll have a little read through this so he says <clears throat> Dear Uncle Clipper, that's my new name. Some people call me Clipper, some people call me Uncle Clipper, some call me Rick and some call me Cunt. I do prefer Clipper, Rick or Uncle Clipper, but I will answer to all four. Right, just a few words before you work your magic and give us another amazing kick-ass down-to-earth review. I pre-ordered this figure just over a year and to me it's a grail figure and I can understand why. I've been after it so bad and I thought how can I get this out there to show collectors all over the digital world what they're missing if they haven't already picked it up. What better way to do 
than a review from the highly respected and in some ways famous, not in some ways, in all ways. So I'll just correct him on that. Uh, collector slash reviewer, The Clipper King. Right. I know you had some criticism in the past of your use of language or child friendliness in some of your reviews. To that I say bollocks. And to that I say bollocks as well. If they don't want to watch, they can fucking skip on past. Uh, what we did for a lot of the collectors of the Amazing Spider-Man QC issue was just legendary. Thank you. I don't see Sean Long or any other collectors get up and challenge the internationally known companies like Hot Toys. You might have a point. Uh, anyway, I'm blabbering. I'm, hang on. Anyway, I'm blabbering a bit now. Uh, I'm not going to say do your best because that's like telling Christopher Nolan to do his best before he starts shooting a Batman movie. You know it's going to be a success either way. Respect, Waz, Rockefeller, can't. P.S. Enjoy the movie if you haven't got it already. But like I said, I have got it, but thanks anyway, because it still means the same. You didn't know I'd got it, and it's uh, a massive, uh, massive thank you to you for sending me, and like I said, also the figure. So, that's the introduction. I'm going to get it in another pose. Like I said, if it's poses you want, there will be another video along. This will probably be a two maybe three part review i want to cover it in depth because obviously i've got to send this figure back so i want the footage that i will need to always enjoy it and also i think if i show you what the figure can do others might pick it up um and yeah get to enjoy a figure that you might not know about but we'll just watch him come around one more time and then we'll fade out and we'll crack on with the review right guys slight difference to a normal review i would normally start with the source material but for the sake of getting the box out of the way, so I can put the figure further back in the cabinet to get better lighting, I'm going to do the packaging first, then roll onto source material, then onto likeness, so on and so forth, like I would normally do. Right, I'm going to say as well at this point, which will be no surprise to you, I told Waz when he asked if he could send me this, I'm going to review it as honestly as possible, if it's a review you want, if it's just a showcase video, then I'll try and do that for you, if it's a comparison you want, then I'll try and do that for you. So no, just do me a normal review. Uh, I said I'm going to review it honestly, any uh, problems with it I'm going to mention them, whether that's just on his version or a problem that I see as in the figure as a whole sort of thing. Uh, so I am going to mention the things I like and the things I don't like. Obviously it's just my taste, so where I might not like something you guys might and vice versa. But I'm going to start off by saying firstly, I've always said about a box, when you're buying something around £200, you want to know before you've even opened it, as soon as it's out of the shipper, you want to know this is a £200 item that you've got in your hand. There's got to be a presentation value about it. And I've got to say, when I first saw this on eBay sort of thing, I thought, yeah, I can see it. It's a £400 item. It's going to have that sort of box. In hand, it's not that sort of vibe. I find it very underwhelming. I think they've sort of cut corners with the way it opens and closes and also the sort of the fact that whatever you're doing with it you're doing one thing and it's damaging another sort of thing or not damaging it but marking it and you can't leave it in pristine condition so uh, let me get into what i said i don't mind the artwork and i like the fact you see it's raised on the batman head and shoulder and then it's raised in this area here you have got the special edition sticker what i will say is it's coming off, so a bit better glue, please, Hot Toys, because if you lose that, then it's as good as a normal version. I will say it were shipped and it were in a polystyrene box, but somehow it has still been dinged in this corner and this corner because it isn't the best quality cardboard, if I'm honest. It's very bog standard, so to speak. Just moving it to the side. To open it, you sort of pull this arm out and obviously there's a tag on there you've got to cut through that to get out and then the inner box slides out now i'm not going to slide that out because basically there's nothing to see other than a foam tray uh, and then underneath that a clam and also because like i said the more you open and close it i just feel that you're beating box up constantly because of the design you're sort of pushing it in and out of this sort of call it a tunnel box you can shove that all the way through sort of thing the center bit and then the figure and everything's inside and I don't know, you seem to be you seem to be dinting it and marking it every time you do it with it. So yeah, a little bit underwhelmed. It would have been better if I mean for example the Enter Bay one with the polystyrene laser cut box. It's not the most eye-catching thing in the world, but 
you know the figure inside safe, you know you're not dinting it and dinging it every time you move it. Um, and I'd have preferred that. I would have preferred if this would have been like a more, it's textured, but if you think about something like the DX13 or the DX10 where it's got that leather feel, like a, like a motorbike jacket, if they'd done something like that, like a more rubberized feel, then I think it'd have been better and probably would have had to use a better card, but they didn't. Um, so yeah, a little bit underwhelmed as well. The, the head looking down, it's not eye-catching. Um, I know it's sort of a, a signature Batman, head tipped forward sort of thing, but the fact you don't see his eyes, you're not drawn to it, or I'm not. So, it does say up here as well, Dark Knight Rises, where the items you get with it, which I'll show in the extras, I think it covers sort of the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. So, they're my thoughts. So the box, mm, I'm only going to give it straight down the middle, 3 out of 5. It's probably better than a slipcover style box, but I just think that how it opens more than anything sort of affects you being able to keep the box in mint condition. So, yep, like I said, I've given it a 3 out of 5. Right, rolling on to source material. As you can see, I swapped him out a little bit, stocked his belt up, gone without the cape. He's got the backpack on, and I will get him rotating shortly. Got the grapple gun on the side. All his pouches on here. His little cylinders. And then around the bike, we've got the sticky bomb gun on his belt. Pose I've gone for is pretty much just got his left hand up. He's listening, having a look with the sonar eyes. And uh, yeah, got a bit of a Hong Kong rescue style uh, feel to it but not, um, normally I would have gone with a mask under the arm and the sticky bomb gun in his hand, but uh, I've gone for this more natural look. So, let's get it rotating. Sure you come round, looking fresh as fuck. I also wanted to show on this as well, the, uh, the articulation through the legs and through the arms. It's definitely improved, but I will cover that when I do the uh, articulation and the outfit. I'll explain why it doesn't restrict it. So. Nice. Just watching turn. Looking beautiful. Right, source material. You know, I have um, reviewed the DX10 Batman. I've did the DX01, the DX02. I've done the DX11. I've done the Bane. I've done the Catwoman. And I've always give a four out of five for these uh, characters from the Dark Knight films. Like I said before, I find it very hard to score sort of an action film or. Uh, I don't know, the sort of film that wouldn't be what they consider award-worthy sort of thing, like Best Picture Award or Best Actor. I struggle to sort of see the serious side of it or consider it a classic. Um, but they are really good films, and I've got to say, the more I watch them, the more I enjoy them. Where the Avengers and some of the Marvel films, the more I watch them, the less I think of them sort of thing. I think the Avengers and the Marvel stuff has a, a quicker impact on me, but then it's sort of... It's gone. Where these Dark Knight films, they're more layered, I think. There's more things... I don't know, I think because it's got one foot in reality, I suppose you see other things and it's like, you have that thing in your mind, I could be Batman, or a normal man could be Batman sort of thing. Whereas, obviously, not a normal man could be Hulk. So I think you see things in the uh, Batman films that you wouldn't see in the Marvel films. So, yeah, do enjoy them. I'd still be reluctant to give them more than a four, because, like I said, I think in 20 years' time, 30 years' time, 40 years' time, we'll be talking it. We'll be talking about them up with the, for me, the Godfather film or the Goodfellas film or something like Scarface or ever like a massively quotable film or an iconic film or an iconic role sort of thing. I, I think it will probably be Christian Bale's, I don't know, his swan song sort of thing or his, what he's renowned for but I don't think they'll be considered classic, classic films. I could be wrong, I don't know. It might be because I'm not a massive Batman fan, so it could be the Batman films the Batman fans wanted. But anyway, for the case this review, I am going to still give it a 4 out of 5. What I will say is, you'll notice that I do change the face plates, and I'm going to pretty much be swapping stuff on and off constantly through this review. Just show you, like I said, that's the uh, Hong Kong Rescue scene back, uh, backpack. It does open out to his cape. So he's got the uh, grapple gun on the uh, side of his belt. Looking pretty stocked up. I did it in this pose because I might not use the stuff on the belt. 
for the rest of the poses. The folded down sticky bomb gun, I will have it opened up when I cover the extras. And then uh, obviously the eye catching sonar eyes, really, really bright in person, done a really good job. And that is just a switch inside the helmet. So very nice. Again, like I say again, simple pose, but I think effective. I'm gonna roll on, I'll probably pop off the Batman head here and start off with the Bruce Wayne and we'll cover the likeness. Rolling on to likeness, and I'm gonna be covering the Bruce Wayne head. As you can see, he's on the figure. I'm gonna show you the Batman head with the new equivalent to PERS and also the Batman, the Batman sonar head. Uh, I'll try and show you all four uh, face plates and then obviously I'll score it up. I'll just show you the pose first. So I've got the Bruce Wayne head, got him with the Tony My um, wired cape. I will say this cape takes some work, so you're probably going to send me messages when you see this video with where the cape's from. You would have to talk to Wazim on that because obviously I've not bought the capes. The capes came with a figure. Both look really nice, but it takes some time to get this one posed because uh, it's very heavy material and it's so uh, don't pull the wire about the wire's okay but because of the length of the cape you sort of got it posed and then you stand figure up and it, it's trapped on floor sort of thing but when it's set up it does look really nice but anyway like i said going back to the uh, likeness so firstly the bruce wayne head sculpt i've got to say is really good i think i could easily just tell you i think it's the best bruce wayne head sculpt out there on any scale by any company. I think it is better than the Enterbay one. Obviously I've got the Enterbay one. Um, I think the Enterbay one captures sort of the Dark Knight version really well. Um, sorry, the Batman Begins version really well because it does look younger. But whereas I think there's something off with the eyes a little bit on that one or maybe the length of the nose, this one I really can't find a problem with it. I think, if I can get in nice and close. I'm struggling because I've put his gun out. You see the wrinkles on the face. Obviously on a one fourth scale figure, you've got more surface area so you can put more detail in. This is why I'm reluctant to ever compare one fourth to one sixth. But I just think, I think the depth in the eyes is there. I think the air on the eyebrows looks very natural. I think from the skin to the airline looks really good. I think if you come around this side, you can sort of see the sort of, it has like sort of a vein that goes just underneath his eye on his right eye. Uh, they've got that really well. They've got his nose right. I really like it. Can't find a problem with it. Um, trying to show you nice and clear. Obviously I've got no natural lighting so I'm pretty much using the light from camera because his head's down. But I think that's pretty good. I just see Christian Bale in there, me. I think a lot of people would agree. Moving down to the Batman heads. I do like both heads. Because I think they've gone a little bit bigger with the eyes than they did on the DX02 Batman. I think the eyes on that were really little. Where this one, they've got like a really glass eye look. And then inside, if you look, the switch for the eyes is there. Like I said, the eyes are really, really bright. So really nice. I will say as well, I have picked up a couple of sort of, I don't know if they're marked in transit or, um, I don't know, marked on production line, but I, I'm going to point them out. And this one, for some reason, has like a scratch mark across the head. Can you see it across there? And there is also somewhere on Sue that it's got on as well, but I can't remember. I think it was on that tip. Like a little scratch sort of thing. Not a not a massive scratch. You can't feel it when you rub over it. It's just sort of as if plastic's been rubbed against plastic. But I did want to point it out because some others might have come out like that. You can see it's sort of there as well. It looks like a, just a shiny line sort of thing. Um, and from what I understand is, when Wazim got it, he basically took it out of the box, inspected it, put it back in the box, and that's where it's been. So it's not like this figure's been bumped around or whatever so but yeah i just wanted to point it out i'm going to turn this off because it's making the camera go pretty pinky colored this is the sort of the proper batman head with movable eyes which are on the stems inside they do move individually so you could go cross-eyed or wall-eyed or whatever 
um, but it does look really nice. It's still in the pole. It's still got his eyes from the first poles where his head was sort of like that, which I really like. The mouth plates. These are the things that take it above and beyond the DX12. Obviously, because of the size of them, they can get more detail in. But when I saw them, I was blown away by them because of the realism. In pictures, they look a little bit awesome. The ones where you see the teeth, because they always go for like a. You think it's a really white tooth which is unnatural but in hand they're not the cream coloured tooth like you would naturally have tooth in enamelled coloured tooth sort of thing but when the light hits it it does make it look whiter than it really is but in hand you've got to trust me they are unbelievable and I will say of the face plates this one is fucking awesome because the sculpt on the teeth the teeth aren't straight and if you look at Christian Bale that is pretty much how his teeth are. And when I saw that one, I was like, fucking hell. Everybody went mad about the uh, teeth on the Hulk figure. I think they've done it again with this one. Like I say, you're thinking, what would it, what sort of pose would he need that in? But I will do a pose later and show the head sculpt with that on. And that is my favourite one. That's what I'm trying to say. But like I said, I do like all four. It won't surprise you that I'm going to give the likeness and it very, very easy, 5 out of 5. I couldn't have really given it anything else. It's that good. Like I say, I love the Batman, the Enter Bay Batman. But if you were to sort of ask me which one is the better, I would say... I would say this one. And I think Dean Knight touched on it a little bit. I think people sort of, sort of pulled to the suit they prefer. I actually prefer this suit than the Batman Begins suit and that might be why but I think the likeness on this is better where, where I mean the likeness I mean it looks like Christian Bale under the mask and I know that one does as well I might sound like I'm giving this a raw deal but I think the depth in the eyes on the on the Octoys one sort of just micros microscopically pips it ahead of the Enter Bay one well, that Bruce Wayne is beautiful